to go ahead and teach you or show you how I am cleaning this uh, sheepskin rug. This is a pretty big rug. It is about two feet by six feet long. And you can see on the left hand side, this is pretty matted. On the right hand side, it looks significantly better. Now, I was looking online to get this thing clean because it was looking pretty ratty. And I thought to myself, oh, I wonder how much it would cost to get this thing steam cleaned or dry cleaned or professionally cleaned. I found out that this thing costs about $80 to get cleaned. Uh, the price for one of these new is usually about $100, $150, uh, sometimes $200. And I got this for free in one of my local free groups. Someone was giving it away and I instantly knew I wanted to use this for the cats. Um, so the cats sleep on here. Clinton, Oreo, Blackberry really like sleeping on it. And as a result of it, I had so much cat hair on here. Now, I do want to tell you guys, you can clean this um, without using a vacuum. However, I would heavily, heavily recommend using a vacuum. Um, try and vacuum as much as you can out there are some bits that just seem to uh, that just can't get lifted it seems uh, for maintenance i was reading that if you do want to get this professionally cleaned, the recommendation is to get this thing cleaned every every six months to a year um and i never got this thing cleaned previously so because the cats were sleeping on it it was just getting more and more matted and instead of throwing it away Again, I wanted to see if I could salvage it. Now, the way that they professionally clean this from what I see is they'll usually do some sort of vacuum. Then they will wash it in a water with some solution. Then they will spin it out and let it dry in some sort of heated room, typically for about 12 to 15 hours. For me, as you guys know, I do not want to wash this thing. I do not want to send this to a professional cleaner because it is cost prohibitive. And if you want, if you are going to follow the suggested recommendation, getting this thing professionally clean every six months to a year, you can imagine, let's just say $80 at a time, it's going to start being very expensive. Imagine you buy this for about $150, two years, your maintenance cost is $160. It's little wonder why some people, they choose just to donate this when it starts getting ratty or they just throw it away. And sheepskin rug is one of those things that can last about 25 years if taken care of properly. So I'm going to show you how I take care of this and how I'm choosing to clean this. Now, my professional tools is the equivalent of what is a sheepskin rug brush. I chose to use the cat grooming brush and I have this linked in the description. This is just a Hertz Gold brush. The thing I like about this brush is, see this? I can slick it and then if it's full of fur, I can just go like this. I am also going to use waterless shampoo. Um, if it's safe for the cats, I'm assuming it is safe for this sheepskin rug. I'm also doing this for my vintage fur coat. My mink coat looks wonderful right now. I'm really happy with it. I've been spraying it about two times a day once in the morning quick one minute brush and then at the evening too this waterless shampoo it has things like let's see over here water something something glycerin honey apple all of this is not talk I like it because it's pH balanced. So when you look at shampoos that they recommend for sheepskin rug, they will tell you use something that's pH balanced. And I like it also because it's skin nourishing. As you guys know, this thing has its leather on the back. So I don't want this thing to, you see over here? I want to make sure that the skin underneath all that fur is nourished and then shine boosting is always a plus. I also have this too, the dander spray. Now I'm doing this concurrently. So I use a waterless shampoo and then I also use a dander spray. The only reason why I'm using this dander spray besides the fact that I have it lying around is that it has, look over here, colloidal oat flour and aloe to nourish dry skin and reduce flaking. Because this is fur, right? There is a sheepskin, right? There is leather underneath the fur. If I can, I want to nourish it underneath because if you have dry leather backing underneath here, 
it's going to promote the fur to fall out. So as much as I can, I want to nourish it without having to wash it and submerge it. So I've already vacuumed this. You can use this initially, but then you can, I would also recommend using this. This is the vacuum that we use. You can see how much fur I've, or how much, you know, cat fur. You can see this is mostly black. This is probably a cat that starts with the Mr. and ends with Clinton. It can't be Oreo over here. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So you might, I'm going to zoom in really quickly. The difference between the right side and the left side is this one is matted. So you know when sometimes you hear about people saying, oh, there was a stray dog and it was all matted? The reason why it gets matted because there's no grooming. It's, you're looking at basically a long hair. And if it just gets trampled on like this, eventually it starts looking really ratty. So when you hear about those animal rescue stories, it usually in it involves people cutting off the mats or brushing through it, a lot of grooming. So I'm going to show you guys how this can turn into this with just some simple steps. First of all, I'm going to use my waterless cat shampoo over here. 99.7 natural. If, if it's safe to use on the cats, it's definitely going to be safe on this. I'm not worried about any toxic chemicals at all. And I'm just going to spray the whole thing. At least half of it. So let me do half at a time. This is like one big cat. That's the way I see it. If you do want to go and put this inside like a better sprayer, like a Home Depot sprayer, you might want to do that because you see how tiny this spray is? This is like for a tiny cat. Okay. So after I spray it, see? Spray your cat from back of ear to tail while carefully avoiding eyes, repeat as needed. So if one isn't enough, you can definitely use more. I usually spray this about five times total. This is not hard to do. It just kind of takes some time. So let me show you over here. Let's go from over here. So you see over here, it's starting to look matted. You can see the difference just by brushing it. Now, by brushing it, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm actually getting some of the stuff that I could not vacuum out. So I do these like soft or these like quick strokes. that it's looking better now sometimes what I notice is is that the mats over here even though it's even though it seems smooth you can kind of tell there's like a little puka over here sometimes it's because you see this it matted at the base so you need so what you should do is just kind of go like this I don't know if you guys can see it I think you guys can see it and then just take it section by section. Of course, I'm not a professional. I'm just a person who wants to avoid paying $80 if they can on a rug clean. And I'm kind of surprised, maybe it's just me. I'm surprised nobody else on YouTube is talking about this. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. You can break it up. But if you have to listen to a podcast, for instance, it's kind of nice. So you are going to be losing some sheepskin, uh, sheepskin wool, I think that's sheepskin fur, but I don't really care. You know, I'm like, eh. The reason why I'm losing so much at this time is because I haven't, I've never, clean this before this is it hasn't been cleaned in about a year so any loss of fur that i'm experiencing right now i just chalk it up to hey this hasn't been maintained 
in the future. I plan to definitely maintain this a lot better. So I'm not going to lose so much for because there's so much matting. I have to basically work through it. I don't know if you guys can look through here. Over here. But there's like little particles over there. See that? For instance, this. Brushing it removes a lot of it. And it's not perfect. You know, you might have to do it multiple times. Let me show this guy. See that? All that gunk. Look at that. And I just, you know, kind of feel it out. If I feel like it looks extra matted, like around here, the center, then I'll just use some cat, waterless cat shampoo and just go at it. As you guys know, I do try to make sure that the stuff that we have in here I'm not having too much overlap. So I don't want to have, let's say, a leather shampoo, uh, like a, fur, a specific fur shampoo, plus a sheepskin shampoo. And that's why you see me kind of doing a lot of thing multi-purpose with just the, with the cat shampoo. Again, this stuff is pH balanced and it's cheap. Some of the leather, the leather sprays that I've been seeing, it's about, I, I see it as high as like $32 for a tube. This, see this? You get 10 fluid ounces, I think, for about six bucks on Amazon. And if you have a cat, you know, you, you know you're going to go through it. This stuff works great. I do use it for the cats. And I also use the dander spray as well. It keeps them looking nice and shiny. Or you'll get the most grooming. So I never have to worry about having one of these sprays just kind of lying around and not being used. Oh, look at that. It did not retract it out. See that? Let's see here. There's a lot of gunk. Not there. I'm just putting it on the ground next to me. I really feel that if you have something like sheepskin, you really should take care of it. I think too often people throw things out because they buy something and they don't want to put the maintenance towards it. They kind of think, well, you know, when I bought it, it was so beautiful. And then after I bought it, Man, it's no longer beautiful, and gosh, it's eighty dollars to get it professionally cleaned. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it away. And then if a person's, let's say, at a thrift store or something, they might not want to spend the time. See how this? They might not want to spend all the time and energy uh, cleaning it up. But with anything, right? You should maintain it. This is not, this is not hard to do. See. I don't know if you guys can see it over there, but right here, I have what looks like to be a nasty mat. See that right here? go over it again see look at all this so all of this stuff is after I vacuumed this so I vacuumed it for about five minutes our vacuum is not the greatest vacuum but this this rug is basically a magnet for fur cat fur lint my hair So it's, I feel like this is one of those times where I'm looking at this and I say, well, this is what happens when you don't maintain it. I would also recommend that if you do have a sheepskin rug, 
don't just maintain it once every four weeks or comb it once every four weeks. I would say try to vacuum it as often as possible. Uh, you don't want to spend an hour, two hours combing. But I actually find this to be quite therapeutic. Listen to something, listen to some music, listen to your favorite YouTuber. Listen to an audio book. Time will fly. And after time flies, you'll look and you'll have a beautifully um, done sheepskin rug. Now, because this is partially wet, I am going to tell you guys that it's not going to be as fluffy as this side. So I've, I've combed this about four times um, and it's thoroughly dry. So you can see the big difference in this and this. What I'm trying to do right now is I'm just trying to make sure that I um, get the mats out and try to get rid of as much as that, um, as much of the stuff in here. So it gets it gets deep in there. You notice I put my hand, I don't know if you guys could see it, but I put my hand right over here because I don't want it to pull. So I'm pulling the, I'm keeping the skin down as taunt as I can. And then I'm combing it. See, you can see all the stuff here. Pretty, pretty, you know, I, I think sheepskin rugs are amazing, but uh, if you have a household with cats, especially, expect cat for the get on here. So it seems like the middle is the most matted for some reason. I think it's because the cats sleep in the middle. I find that soft, small strokes are really good because it helps promote the fluffiness of it. See, because if I go like this, you see how it just kind of goes down like that? But if I go kind of like small little strokes, I kind of tough it up. I think we got this comb about two years ago. So I've used this hundreds of times. And I have to say, um, if you guys have a dog or a cat, highly, highly, highly recommend using having this thing. I really feel like it saves so much money and time because I don't have to think to myself, oh, well, is there a better, um, is there a better brush out there? We have two of them in the apartment, one on each side, because let's say it's nighttime and I want to quickly comb Oreo, I don't have to go towards um, the kitchen side and uh, do it that way. Same thing with... Um, broom. We have two brooms in here on opposite sides of the apartment. If you're feeling lazy, you don't want to walk to the other side, you got two brooms. One near, one is near the kitchen and the other one is um, right next to the litter box.
Do it. So what do you guys think? Do you guys see the difference? So this is still wet. But once it dries, it's going to look more like that. But you can definitely tell it looks a lot less, um, a lot less, uh, what's I'm going to call it, matted than it did previously. And it didn't take that long. How long did this take me? See? See? So when you go like this, you can see that hole right there. See this hole? That's how I know there's a mat. So for any of you who have huge um, sheepskin rugs and you can't put yours through the washing machine or if you're, you know, you don't want to risk damaging it and you have some cat shampoo and a cat brush, take advantage of it, okay? Like you already have this stuff. Sometimes I think people, they, they, they have this desire about trying to do things themselves, but they discount themselves because they feel like, oh, I'm not a professional. If I'm not a professional, I can't clean this or, you know, I can't do a professional job. That's why when I look at this stuff, I like to see what are the steps the professionals do. And by knowing what their steps are, I think, can I apply this to a household um, thing? If the professional is vacuuming a rug first, and then if they're you know, spraying some kind of shampoo or if they're washing it, okay, instead of putting it through water, can I just use a waterless shampoo? Okay, and they're brushing it too. Okay, let me go ahead and brush it as well. I got a cat brush. It's not a sheepskin brush, but they look very similar. They look, it's basic, it looks basically like this, but it has a, um, less, less teeth in my opinion. There's really no reason for me to spend $13 on a sheepskin, br uh, sheepskin brush when the cat brush works perfectly fine. Maybe I lose a little bit more fur, but as I mentioned, if you keep up with maintenance, Maybe I can just mostly vacuum it and then comb it out, you know, once a while. See that? So you can see the difference here. This side dry, this side still wet. And then if you want to fluff it, small little strokes. I would also suggest that after it's completely dry, make sure that you go at it again. Um, and then don't hesitate to use, you know, dander spray or something like that. I'm just using the dander spray because of that colloidal, colloidal oat and aloe over here. But I think this is optional. I just like using both of them, especially because we have them. Uh, so this is basically done um, at least up to here. So I'm going to just scoosh it over here and then work my way down here. So you can see, again, the big difference, matted, clean. zoom in see that matting so there are a lot of little particles in here and that's why I recommend going over this multiple times this is like my little pendants for not taking care of this but then again I tell myself eh, it's no big deal. There's a lot of people who aren't keeping this clean every six months or a year. But I can always change it. See? So even though I combed it, you can see right here we have some matting. 
So don't just don't just go like this and think it's fine, okay? You gotta really just section it off. This brush is really good at picking up a lot of the stuff. It won't pick every up everything at the first pass, but as you can see, it picks up quite a bit. Once this stuff gets um, into the hairs, it really kind of nestles its way in there. But no biggie. back before they had professional furriers and dry cleaning people how were people taking care of their um, sheepskin and I found kind of limited information I found combing and I did hear that some people wash it but then of course it gets hard in the back so some people they have to kind of like beat it up um, until the skin loosens in the back I believe you can also get this thing dry cleaned as well, but I imagine it would be kind of expensive. I say this because I do know that for a down comforter to get this thing dry cleaned, uh, to get a down comforter dry cleaned, I've heard it costs about $60. So if you're spending about $100 on a down comforter or so, and then $60 to wash it, it, it gets pricey. That's the thing. You know, people, people really need to factor in this stuff. I could have done an edited video for you guys, but I wanted to show you guys in the event anybody wants to take in a sheepskin rug, or if you see something that looks nice, but it's at a thrift store, it looks a little matted. Um, this is what you have to do. Maybe this is boring for some people, but hey, this is reality. Once you clean this stuff, you know, once you do a couple passes on the whole thing, you feel like, hey, maintenance gets easier and easier so long as you're on top of it. What do you think of this? Looking nicer, yeah? I'm doing my little repairing sheepskin rug string. Lewis does the electronics. I do a lot of the other stuff. Oh, he also fixes cords, in case you guys did not know. And then don't forget to do the sides as well, you know, these side edges. Eric, what are you doing? Cleaning the sheepskin rug. Mr. Clinton's just going to take it back and mess it up again. What? No. Yeah, that's what he does. He's a Clinton. What? He's okay, by the way, you guys, this is all the... He's going to come back and he's going to mess it up because he's a Clinton. All the waste that I have so far. You know Clinton's gonna mess up the rug after you clean it. I know. That's what he does. He's so you know, you can you can watch this video so you know how to take care of this rug too.
See that? So it is moving. Oh, you can see this. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a lot of dirt and whatnot over here. Yeah, so you can use a washing machine. Um, and I'm going to flip this around over here. See that? So you can see, right, what I'm talking about here to here. So let's go and do this over here. Waterless shampoo. Spray whatever you want. I really don't think there's such thing as overspray, but yeah, if your finger gets tired or if you get tired of combing, just take a break. You don't have to um, comb everything all in one sitting. Sometimes like people see these videos on YouTube and they're like, oh my gosh, it looks like so much work. I can't do it. But no, it's not that bad at all. know my stance on this stuff um if you can i would highly recommend buying it used um buying it vintage instead of buying new uh, one thing that's great about sheepskin though is, is that there's no shortage of um uh sheep out there i've been hearing that they said this is i you know i did research before i picked this up um, what i was reading it was is that a lot of people uh, a lot of people think like, oh, well, if I buy this, won't it be contributing to, uh, you know, maybe sheep dying? The truth is, is only about 2% of sheep are ever made into a sheepskin rug. A huge majority of it just goes into waste from what I've been reading. And it's true. You got to think about it. Like how many people eat lamb, eat, what was it, mutton, things like that. And Mutton? Yeah, mutton. Uh, that's an older lamb. Mutton? Yeah. How many people eat that, but then they never have a sheepskin rug? Mutton. Yeah. Mutton. 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 Erica, what sits on this rug? Handsome. What else? What Another was he, cat. What was he when he was like when he was only two months old? Who would you have called him? Who? Oreo. Oreo? Yeah. I would have called him handsome. At two months? Yeah. At one week. Super handsome. What? Oreo must have been born very aesthetic. That's what I find very surprising about Oreo. I always ask myself, like, who would have, you know, how could anyone dump Oreo? He's so good looking, in my opinion. And yeah. So, the good thing, um, as I mentioned to you guys, so the sheepskin rug. One of the reasons why I got this rug is because, you know, we have three senior cats here. Their joints aren't the greatest, senior? as you guys know. So when I was hearing about this, I heard that if they're on the sheepskin rug, it kind of acts as a cushion for them. And because this is about two feet by six feet long, I figured also that this is so much better than a cat, a cat bed because they can, they can sprawl out, right? They don't have to be relegated to like a little cat bed. So if you have any senior dogs or senior cats, I would recommend getting a sheepskin rug. I've also heard that this stuff is good for babies too, you know, human babies. Some people have it in their car seat as well. Did you call Clinton a senior? He is a senior. How old is he? Twelve. Twelve? So how does this help their joint if they're... He spends his day jumping up and down on stuff. What's the difference between sitting on that versus a couch or a floor? Well, this one, he doesn't have to. Okay, so the good thing about this is, is that it's cool. So it's comforting, but it doesn't it doesn't feel super hot underneath them. There's a lot of airflow from what I hear. And it's true. You know, I've sat on sheepskin, sheepskin um, car seats before, and it's so nice and luxurious feeling. So I wanted the cats to have that too. So we don't... You know, Lewis and I don't really use this. It's just really for the cats. And Oreo likes it, and I'm sure they're going to love it. 
when I'm done cleaning this. So I'll do as much as I can today and then tomorrow I'll also be doing this again. Oreo never sits on it though. He does. I've seen him use it. He never gets a chance. Why? Somebody else has done it for him. Oh, you. You know what? By the way, that is a child. That's not Oreo, in case you're wondering. <laughs> I know we always joke about Oreo crying, but no, that's a that's a child. Super cute kid too. of hair here. No, Oreo fits on this. Okay. So while this is drying over here, More stuff over here. So this is actually looking quite nice. I'm gonna take a short break because I need to charge, but you can see how that side is looking nice and fluffy. This side is still a little wet. Um, and you can see also in real time how much sheepskin uh, fur I'm losing. And the reason why I'm losing so much is because I'm trying to remove the cat poop from it too. And there's matting, right? If I, if I didn't have all this matting, I wouldn't have lost so much. Yep, regular maintenance. Exactly, exactly. This hasn't been maintained in about a year, so that's the reason why it's like this. I really would suggest, though, uh, for people who are who are getting who do want to get a sheepskin rug, like don't don't be afraid of maintaining it. It's not that bad. It really isn't that bad. If you are okay with like conditioning your leather bag. You should be, this should be right up your alley. You can talk to your friends on the phone while you do this. And if you don't get it right the first time or the second or third time, don't fret about it. So you can see it's already starting to look much better. I feel like in the middle though, it is a little flatter. So I'm gonna clean this a little bit more. Yep. 
the cheap fur brushes that I've seen, I just think it's such a pain if you have to like manually remove each layer. So having a spring one like this is great. We used to have a, another brush and it was such a piece of crap because you would have to manually remove it versus just pressing a button. Huh? I'm about to put that baby in an ultrasonic thing. You know what I should say? Ultrasonic the baby? No, oh, I think I think that kid you know what? That kid is just going through a little phase. One day he'll stop crying so much. And it's so cute. Have you seen that kid? She's so cute. Okay, so here. We got two things over here. quite good. See the difference, you guys? Huh. Okay, so let's go back. Spray this again. Okay, see, it's looking more and more like a, more and more like this, yeah? More and more like a, a clean rug. How long have I been doing this? 43 minutes, not bad. looks not bad so you can see the big difference so here's the other side so this side is still wet over here but remember the other side that I did see it looks nice and fluffy does it not I'm just doing the corner to fluff it up. So this is around the time where that nursery falling. I like this spray because it actually makes it nice and shiny.
spill some stuff on here. Flip it to the other side. Now you don't have to do what I'm doing. Of course, I'm just flipping it because I don't want to move the camera. That's it. And yeah. So you don't have to finish off with dander spray. I just like adding that little shine after I feel like I've, I've used quite a bit of shampoo. But you can always use more. Because this is 99.7 all natural, You'll have to reapply it, you know, eventually. So, yeah, I think this is quite good. Let's see, I got my dander spray over here. Dander. Okay, so how much, I think this is a good stopping point for tonight. It looks quite good. And I'm going to show you guys how this looks. Whoops. See that? Over there. So this looks so much better than it did before. This side is still wet. This side is a lot more dry. And this over here is all the, all the mess that I had. Actually, this is not all lit. Hold on. Let me show you guys this total amateur right now. See that? But I also have this part over here. So this is quite a bit of fur over here. Oh my goodness. Quite a bit of fur. And um, I don't you know, this is all stuff that might seem like a lot, but for me, I just see this as the accumulation of not brushing um, or not maintaining this for quite some time. And I hope that you guys kind of look at this and just think to yourself like, yeah, man, that's a lot of black cat fur over here. See all that? Oreo is sleeping over here. So brush, um, brush out a sheepskin rug if you do have it. And um, tomorrow I'm definitely going to be rebrushing this again. See that? That is how it looks like. I think it's quite nice over here. And let's do a little cam throw. So I got this. So the side is still a little wet. And that side is a lot more drier. It looks 
a lot closer to something new. Don't you agree? Especially that side, because that side's a lot more dry than this side. Um, but, yeah, so all that stuff, don't let it... Oh, oh, hold up a second. See that? That is a mat. Where did that thing go? Eh, I'll get it tomorrow in the morning. So, overall, that is how I will be taking care of this thing. If you guys have any other better uh, solutions, let me know. Um, I like it because it's already here. Um, I really feel that people need to maintain their items. And um, if you do, you know, if you aren't maintaining it, you are really doing yourself a disservice. I feel bad for all the sheep skins that got tossed out because it looked like how this one did before. And I'm pretty sure one of the reasons why I got this for free is because the original owners of this, they saw it and they thought, oh, it's looking a little ratty. Yeah, let's, let's just toss it because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to get it professionally cleaned and or spend the time maintaining it. These kind of items, I don't take it for granted. And um, yeah, if you have an item and you maintain it, hopefully it'll last you many years to come. This rug, I'm sure uh, if you maintain it, it could last you at least 10 years, um, 10. I don't wanna say 20, cause I don't know how, how, how it'll look in 20 years, but I would say at least 10 years. Um, regularly vacuum, you don't have to brush it intensely like how I did. But if you vacuum it or you do like a quick little brush here and there, you know, just put the vacuum over it and then make sure that this thing isn't getting like a heavy foot traffic. And yeah, all is, all is good. And I hope that you guys kind of look at this stuff and you realize that, hey, if anybody, you know, if anybody um, wants to make a purchase, just look at the, the care of how I have to, uh, what I did. And um, yeah, looks nice. I think it looks nice. Hold on. Hey, Lewis, what do you think of this? Um, what's this? Can you come over here? Um, what? I, I, I combed it and everything. Mm -hmm. I spent the last 53 minutes combing it, and that's just today. I'm just flicking it towards with the side of it. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, the middle definitely looks like it's getting more more wear. I think Clinton is too heavy. See? Simple. Hey, come over here. I want to show you the rug. Get up. Huh? Get up. Yeah. Oh. I try to make it pretty. It's a rug. Yeah, but don't you think it looks much nicer now? It looks amazing. It looks much nicer now. Yeah. I maintained a lot more. So that is uh, maintenance for a sheepskin rug. And uh, you guys take care. And uh, I will talk to you later. Um, what? What's all that? Oh, this? What's all that? Yeah. Oh, that's all the stuff that I combed off of it. But it doesn't grow up back because it's a dead sheep. Yeah, it doesn't. But that's the reason, that's a combination of matting. That's a culmination of Clinton's fur. That is not Clinton's fur color. He's not that gray yet. Huh? No, it's black mixed in with white. See? It's black. You can definitely see there's some black fur in there. <laughs> so when you have a culmination of all this stuff together, that equals all that shedding. But yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys take care and uh, talk to you guys later.